Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, we're taking a look at a new keyboard from XVX. And it is an interesting one. It is not plastic and it's not aluminum. This is a wooden keyboard. Um, for the longest time, I mean, there might have been a couple of group buys for wooden keyboards, but I've only seen like extra cases that you could get. I've never seen until recently pre-built wooden keyboards uh, one that i recently reviewed and this one which i'm reviewing now and another one that i think i'll be reviewing and then comparing all the three of them but this one today that we're taking a look at is the xvx m68 now they do uh it is listed as a 60 percent even on the box but it is a 68 key 65 percent if i'm not mistaken so let's go ahead and just dive into it and see what we've got so before taking a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have in the box. We have a user manual and it appears to be English only and just the uh, different shortcuts and functionality, how to connect it, how to view, how to cycle through the backlight effects and a uh, their URL to download the software. We appear to have a tool set here, which includes an Allen wrench, a horseshoe style, switch puller as well as a plastic keycap puller um, and a brush which is um, interesting obviously to keep it clean um, and to open it looks like we have an alternate space bar a ribbon braided USB-C to USB-A cable we have a keychain fidget toy basically a clicky this is a blue so this is a jersey blue clicky and this looks to just be like a tinted PC keycap we also have some extra switches and these appear to be XVX branded they do feel like a palm switch they are long pull and they have a well-defined glassy bottom out linear switch with what I'd guess is a 45 50 gram weighted spring and here we are with the xvx m68 wooden 65 percent and i gotta say it's quite nice now it definitely reminds me of another wooden keyboard that just came in stock recently um though i do believe this one is a tad bit cheaper uh the keycaps have a cat theme um i don't know about you but i'm a cat lover so <laughs> almost anything you could take and I may not like but you put a cat on and I'm like okay I like it <laughs> so we have what appears to be let me see MOA or MDA MOA because MDA yeah I believe this is an MOA keycap profile though I'll make sure when I do the spec section but let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got underneath here all right so we've got some nice thick Die some PBT keycaps. Let's see how thick they are. They seem pretty thick. Oh, yeah. 1.7. Wow. They are getting thicker and thicker, these keycaps. They're going to have to stop at a certain point. They're going to start interfering again with switches. 1.7 millimeters thick PBT die sub keycaps. That is um, pretty good for stock keycaps. Now, let's see what we've got here. This is the switch. We have the spare in the box, the XVX. And it's like a it's like a long pole cream. The best way to describe it. Though it kind of has a little bit of a higher deep pitch. It's almost it's funny because it's kind of like um reminds me of a Franken switch that I made with the uh, stem of a linear princess mmd princess and the housing of a kale cream and not only does it look similar it actually sounds similar though this might be a little bit lighter i think i used a heavier weight spring but it is a de decent linear we got some plate mounted stabilizers and they're really well attached let's take these out real quick and they are lightly lubricated they're not overly lubricated and they got lubrication on the 
the elbow here as well as inside the housing, but just enough, not so much where it's leaving pools behind. Then we have, oh yeah, we do. We have screw and stabilizer support. There are holes for screw and stabilizers. Very nice. All right, I'm digging this, digging this. And the plate looks like it has plenty of space to allow them. We also have the high fine layers with the PET layer right above the PCB and the IXPE layer above that. I'm just, honestly, I continue to be pleasantly surprised with what I keep seeing coming out in, in stock and available nowadays. It's just, uh, it really is a buyer's market. Those plate mounted stabilizers really are just fine in my opinion, though it's nice to know that we do have the option for screw and stabilizers. The colors on these, some might think, I kind of like black on brown. Um, I know that there's not as much contrast there. Some people may not like that, but I, as this is a, I mean, we do have an optional space bar, so that matches this color. But personally, I know when I come back to this, I'm going to load it up. There's a couple of different keycap sets that I think would just look gorgeous with the, with the wood. And not that I, I mean, I actually, I love the Legends of the Alphas because they're nice and big. And that's just, that's something that I enjoy when it comes to design. But the offset for the uh, Legends on the numbers. And I mean, just a couple other little things that I'm just like, mm. personally, I want to change them out. But I have a lot of keyboards. I have a lot of keycap sets. I think for a lot of people, if they get this, they're going to be like, oh, okay, this is nice. I like it. And they'll probably stick to it just like this. So I do love how we have that gold bar there. Uh, I do know a lot of people are like, oh, why is there a logo there? And I, I personally would have gone with putting the logo down at the bottom or even in the back and just leaving this, this bar nice and clean but at least the logo is fairly small. Um, so it looks like we've got an FR4 plate. It is gasket mounted. And the keyboard, as it sounds stock, I think 90% of people that get it are going to be happy with it. It's got the high file layers, though perhaps because of the wood or the construction it has a, or well, probably a combination of that and the keycaps, but it does have a deeper tone to it. Honestly, it's my opinion that I think most people will be like, yeah, it's, uh, this sounds just fine to me. And not only that, it looks really classy. Really, really classy. Now, since this is wood, you're going to want to uh, get either carnauba wax or uh, just a, a wood wax. Something that you can usually buy a small container on Amazon for, for cheap. And it's not something that you have to do on a regular basis, but I would at least like eh, maybe three, four times a year, um, clean it off first and then take the wax and rub it on. And then, you know, go through the process of waxing the board. It'll maintain this wood longer and looking just as nice as it does today. Just the specs. Today, we are taking a look at the XVX M68, a wired 68 key. 65% keyboard made from a wooden case. It is a CNC North American solid walnut case with a brass accent. It includes a leaf spring gasket mounted FR4 plate, a south facing three and five pin hot swap PCB with hi-fi layers and support for screw and stabilizers, pre-lubed XVX medium purple linear switches, as well as die sub coffee time MOA keycaps that are 1.7 millimeters in thickness. This keyboard comes weighing in at 792 grams. 
The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 and a half millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 36, fighting for a default typing angle of nine degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $99.99, though it is currently on sale for $89.90 on XVX's website, links below. I went to xvxchannel.com to download the software. And when I went to the software downloading page, I noticed that below the software link, there was an upgrade patch. So assuming this is a firmware upgrade, I downloaded the Win version. I guess they have a Win and a Mac version to upgrade the firmware, but the software appears to be only for Windows. So downloading it, making sure that I'm plugged into power, battery backup, run it, hit start. It was pretty quick. The keyboard rebooted, turned off, turned back on, and then everything seemed fine. So I went ahead and downloaded the software. It took me to a Google Drive link. So once I've gotten the driver installed, I open it up and it's a very common uh, base software that I've been seeing lately where you have your top layer, your function layer. Sometimes you have a secondary function layer, but you at least have your top layer, your function layer, as well as um, you can select toggle or momentary. So momentary is basically tap and toggle is like press and hold. So you can have numerous different configurations and that will include any changes that you make to the top layer as well as to the function layer. Now, when looking at the screen, obviously the keyboard does not match what we have out here. I figured that, you know, maybe the firmware would update that, but it would be nice to at least have the keyboard look like the keyboard that we're actually dealing with but at least we, we do have function layers so i could go ahead and map my necessary in uh, insert underneath the leap and we have a very basic macro editor it works for simple macros combinations things that you might type all the time and you want to map to either a key or a function key combination so that it triggers whenever you do when you do that key combination. So you don't have to type something over and over again. Very basic, um, and you can also include mouse inputs. Now for the uh, light effects, we have a selection of all the different light effects. You can go with single colors on, you can go with static, breathing, colorful, so on, set the brightness and set the speed. And we also have a section for doing per key RGB called user lightning user lighting and that's where you just would hit the plus you would create a new custom light you can rename it call it whatever you like you can select either either by dragging or selecting individual keys and then pressing a color box and it'll change those colors i'm not exactly sure what the real-time lighting section is for it didn't do anything when i were selecting it it just turned off all the lights on the keyboard so that's usually where on a lot of this software packages that I've seen that are very similar, that's usually where the screen control is. And there's music rhythm, which you can select to match with any music that might be playing. And then we have our settings page where we can change our key response time and we can also set sleep or disable sleep. We also have the ability to disable Windows key, Alt F4. So a fairly standard um, software that does give us function layers and gives us different configurations. So we could have configurations set up for, say one is for gaming and one is for work, or one is for music editing, one is for video editing, uh, whatever you, know, you may want, but it gives us the ability to at least do a function layer. Te technically, because we can do tap, we could do a little bit more um, than just that function layer, although they technically be on the same layer, but it gives us more functionality than a lot of other closed source software, especially, you know, the ones that don't even give you a function layer. Like all you can do is remap and you can't even remap all the keys. So, um, I'm, I run Linux. So as long as I can save, store the settings on the keyboard, which I haven't come across a keyboard that hasn't had that ability in a very long time. 
um, and it was membrane, not a mechanical. So as long as I could store the settings on the keyboard and then plug it into my workstation and it rem remembers that I'm good to go. So we have a lovely keyboard. Like I said, taking care of this wood is going to help it last and, you know, stay looking nice and fresh. I mean, I don't know, some people may want the worn out look, but if you want to keep this looking as good as it does today, um, giving it a good waxing with carnauba wax or other, there might be some better wax for walnut wood. Um, I'm not particularly a wood expert, but just a quick wax and buff with a soft cloth will definitely keep this looking nice. When we do come back to it, we'll take it apart. We'll see how it's built. We'll see if we, we can do anything to make it sound a little bit deeper because I love that it has that deeper tone to begin with. Um, but I think that I could make it sound deeper. And I actually have a keycap set that I think would just look perfect on this, which are their SA or AF, AFSA profile. So they're even taller. So that'll even help even more to get like that deep. And maybe we'll just get this a really just chunky thock kind of keyboard. And I'm looking forward to, to that. But I'm actually, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my desk after I'm done with production and use it as my um, driver at, at my daily for at least a, a couple of days. I did use the other keyboard that's quite similar to this one and it was quite enjoyable. Um, I've, I've never really selected FR4 plates if I have the choice, but when I've gotten keyboards with FR4 plates, I actually enjoy them just fine because they're not as flexy. They usually go with a PC plate, um, so, or a Palm if it's available, but I really can't complain about FR4 plates and I like the FR4 plate on here. It just, I've got just enough flex that I'm, I don't feel like I'm typing on a trampoline, but it's still very steady. And I think it's actually adding to a deeper tone. Um, it could be the switch or it could be the, the, the keycaps um, because they are definitely at 1.7 millimeters, pretty thick. So, so if you do have any questions, comments, suggestions for when I come back to this, please do let me know down in the comment section below. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the XVX M68. Um, I do hope that you enjoy the video. I want to wish everyone out there an awesome day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.